Hey, it's Justin Harvey. Thanks for tuning in to the Anesthesia and Pain Management Success Podcast. With APM Success, we take a close look at important topics pertaining to business, practice management, personal finance, and careers for anesthesiologists and pain management physicians. We work hard to take your critical questions straight to the experts. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to another episode of APM Success. This is the first in a two-part series designed to help practice owners who are interested in um, selling their practice, transitioning, uh, understand some of the important deal structure considerations. And to discuss that today, I have my friend, tax expert, Evgeny Ivanov. Evgeny, thanks for being here. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for having me back. Uh, so today we're going to tackle installment sales and what that is. And we just want to give our listeners a high level idea of what is an installment sale? How does it work? And give you this category of understanding so that physicians and their team of advisors can consider it and see if it might be a fit. Next week, we're going to talk about um, deal structure as it relates to an asset versus stock sale. So we'll get into the weeds there. As it relates to the topic at hand, Evgeny, uh, what is an installment sale? Well, I'm not going to give you that official definition by the book, but basically an installment sale is when you have a sale a transaction that there's at least one payment that's in a future tax year. And that means you have to report them both separately, one when it happens, and then the second one when you receive the final payment. Well or multiple ones. There could be multiple payments in between, but at least one is in the next tax period. So uh, another way to, you know, if we're thinking about like a common example of this, you know, whenever we see the, I think the mega mega millions or whatever is up to 1.55 billion right now. I happened to see the other day. So whenever somebody hits the lottery, they always have the option. You can take the cash deal today and it's like half of the amount, or you can take the annuitized amount and it stretches out way into the future summing to the total value, but it takes you 30 years to get it all. So we're essentially talking today about the business equivalent of, (laughs) do you want the money today or do you want it stretched out? And a lot of the difference has to do with the tax treatment because of the way the tax brackets work. So help us understand, Evgeny, from a tax standpoint, why might it be beneficial to sell your practice over four years, for example, instead of over one year? Now, I'm sure people have heard a lot about the tax numbers. How much do you get if you collect all your lottery winnings now and how much you receive if you receive over 30 years? It's not as bad with these installment sales. <laughs> so I know uh, I see it all the time. Hey, uh, people give various advices for the lottery winners. But here, the benefit comes, the big benefit comes that you don't pay the tax all at once if you're the seller. You just pay a little bit each year, and you also receive a little bit of income. Usually, there's an interest component to that, so it's a little extra cash. And it could be possible, depending on your income after you sell, it might be in different brackets for a capital gain treatment, either 15 or 20 percent, depending on your income. So that that's the the benefit. Chances are, a lot of our clients will be in the 20 percent bracket unless they really stop working and just enjoy retirement and say, uh, live off their savings, you just don't pay the tax right away. You just defer it. And so if you're able to go from receiving a lump sum in, year, in one year and paying a significant amount at the 20% long-term cap gains threshold, if you're able to go from that as exhibit A and option B, the installment sale option, you're able to take more money in the 15% range. And that, I think that threshold is somewhere between five and $600,000. So if you're keeping your total income south of, we'll call it half a million bucks for our example, then more and more of that income is going to be recouped with a 5% tax advantage. Am I properly articulating that? Yeah, that's correct. And that number is for merit filing jointly, the right, half a million. Right. So we we make an assumption that the seller is married and they file a joint tax with them here. So that, yeah, yeah that ahead. is that is uh, the savings if you can keep your income below the bracket, the below the limit for the 20% tax on capital gains, you will be saving 5%. So for our listeners, you, you might think, well, 5% 
is that really worth it? <laughs> it doesn't sound like that much. I mean, it's sure it's if we're talking on a millions of dollars transaction, it adds up, but it's not like 20 percent <laughs> um, or more. Uh, and, and this does get into the sort of the, the conversation of is the juice worth the squeeze for a 5% tax savings to do something like an installment sale? So Evgeny, help us understand how does an installment sale unfold in terms of equity changing hands over time if we were to do this, in this example, a four-year installment sale? Well, the ownership changes hands right away. At the, at the time when you sign the deal, it's just the cash doesn't come in right away. So either you sell your business, we're not going to go into detail about asset versus equity sales at this point but when you do it the new owner takes possession right away and pay you over time and so this introduces what we might call counterparty risk uh if you are getting money spread out over four years and you're giving the keys to your business in this case a medical practice you're giving the keys to somebody else either a, a, another group or a physician or a couple physicians um, your continuing to get paid is contingent on their continuing to successfully operate the business. So one of the things you want to keep in view here is if you're getting 20% or 25% this year and then 25, 25, 25 in the future, there needs to continue to be revenues and profit sufficient to pay you out or else uh, you're going to be in bankruptcy court arguing in front of a judge about why these people <laughs> should pay you with, you know, the assets that they have left over. Well, that is, that is a risk for sure. And, but it's, it's, there's the same risk in every transaction chances, unless you collect all of your money upfront, you will have the risk of not receiving all of it by the time the terms come, uh, come to end. And you need to do your due diligence before you sell. Pick your, pick your buyers based on different metrics, what you see out there. Don't just randomly pick the person that gives you the most money. And in, you also need to think about it. If you're selling to a young doctor or somebody who inherits your practice, by doing a, the installment sale, you help them as well with their cash flow. They may not have the cash to pay you everything up front. So... It's a, it's a risk, but it benefits everybody at the end. Yeah, this is a good point. So understanding who is the buyer and how amenable might they be to a, an installment sale, if that makes sense for the seller, is, is an important thing to consider. So when I see, for example, private equity, uh, which is a common buyer of physicians' medical practices, and Evgeny, I want to hear what you see too, but um, – Installment sales are, there, there's an approximation in terms of incentive, but it's not an installment sale. There's frequently an event, a sale, a liquidity event where you get the cash and then it's a done deal. Sometimes there's equity with like an MSO if the private equity group has uh, an umbrella organization, they're going to give you equity in that other umbrella organization that may... They, they would say like, oh, we're going to sell this thing again. They call it the second bite at the apple. Like we're going to sell it again to a bigger group five years from now. And so you get paid today. You might get paid again in five years. But there's no installment sale. However, there is frequently uh, an earn out or some other compensation structure with an employment agreement attached saying, well, you got to work three years in order for this to be a complete transaction and you're going to earn a salary of whatever, $300,000 for the next three years in order for the private equity group to recoup their money. And so for the selling physician, what they're doing is they're going from being an owner who earns the W-2 wage from their clinical efforts plus the profits from business ownership. They're essentially selling the profits to the acquirer and they're taking just the clinical salary. This often is not an installment sales structure, but there is that ongoing employment arrangement. Um, Evgeny, which, in what cases have you seen most common to use something like an installment sale? Is it with physician-to-physician -physician sales? Well, physician-to-physician, -physician, almost in every case, is an installment sale. If you, and if you want to help the younger physician, if you're completely getting out and you're selling to another physician who's already established his, his or her own practice, at that point, maybe you can collect all of it and just completely retire. With the private equity, it's not an installment sale. You get a bunch of the, well, not a, in the 
the real definition of installment sale, but it's treated as an installment sale. You, you have a lot of the cash received at the sale, time of the sale, but because of all those payouts and announced that are embedded in the escrows, some, a lot of those come in the future year, yeah. it's treated as an installment sale on the tax return. And I don't remember seeing any private equity deal that doesn't have a rollover equity to where the physician gets on ownership in, in the structure of the of the private equity buyer. And the reason for that is, think about it, private equity, they're not physicians. If, uh, if you sell to them and you retire, there's nobody to work and produce. So they want you to, have, to be engaged and continue working. That's why they give you a piece of the pie in their structure, They're trying to motivate you to stay. Usually the goal is five, six years. You work five, six years, and then they sell to a bigger group, and then you can retire and cash out. But those five, six years, they need to grow. But yeah, if you sell to a younger physician, you do an installment sale, one of the reasons will be to help them with their cash flow, as I mentioned earlier. The other reason will be to defer your tax payments and maybe you'll go get into a lower bracket and pay less tax. Now, I can see the argument some people will say, well, if I get all of it, I can make more on the market than the 5% I'm saving. There's always a chance. That's correct. But you never know. Yeah. And so the purpose here for our discussion today is to just let listeners know, especially for physicians in their 50s or 60s who are thinking about retirement or thinking about phasing out. Um, and there is some strategic value to using something like an installment sale, especially in your mid-60s to kind of, you know, age 73 is when you have to start taking required minimum distributions, uh, which means your IRAs and your 401ks, you're forced by the IRS to start distributing those assets and taking income and paying the taxes on them. Because remember, these, this money has been growing tax deferred. So between age, you know, we'll call it age 60, if you sell at that time, and then age in your early 70s when RMDs start, um, and age 70, which is the latest you can take Social Security, we'll call it age 60 to 70, there's this window of you can have income, like in an installment sale, for example, or other, um, you know, Roth conversions can happen in this window where there's strategic planning opportunity from a tax standpoint to basically get as much money at lower tax brackets as possible. Because what often also happens is once you're retired and you have a handful of millions in tax-deferred accounts, if you've been a diligent saver for a couple decades, um, then you're going to have RMDs that are required minimum distributions that are going to be taxed in some cases that on the some of the top margins, depending on marriage status. So this time in your 60s uh, can be a strategic opportunity and an installment sale can be a tool that can be useful in that time frame. Absolutely. Um, Evgeny, any other reflections or things to think about for folks considering an installment sale? Be careful who you're selling to. Do your due diligence. It's if you think you're you're not going to collect, maybe try to ask for the money up front or not up front. When you sell at the time of the sale, don't do an installment sale. I've seen installment sales when, and I don't know why they would do it. They sold the assets, received 80%, 90% of the cash now, and then the last payment is due in 10 years. I don't know if they'll ever collect. A lot can happen in 10 years. Why was it done that way? I have no idea, but I've seen stuff like that. And the usual ones so you have a little bit in each year and within usually five years you collect everything and you're you're done so be careful consider it do your calculations do your planning and good luck and this goes without saying but sometimes the things that go without saying need to be reinforced don't try to figure this out on your own. Have a good healthcare attorney, have a good CPA, have an integrated planning team that's going to help you understand all the different considerations in going through a, something as complex as a business transaction for a medical practice. Because you only get one shot at it and the implications can be massive. And uh, if you're, especially if you're depending on a, a certain minimum windfall to fund your uh, retirement, it's very important to have the appropriate professionals involved. That's all I've got for this week. Evgeny, thanks for joining us. We'll talk again next week about another facet of business transactions, asset versus stock sales. Talk Thank you, you, Justin. Thanks for having me. 
If you liked what you heard this week, head on over to apmsuccess.com, where you can find more content and free resources to help you build a successful career in anesthesia and pain management. If you wanted to leave a review in iTunes, I'd also really appreciate it. Thanks for using some of your valuable time to join me today on APM Success.